Right, so, it's a bit of a miserable grey day today, and what I'm going to do is put up the lily bulbs, what I should have done ages ago. We start with these ones. These ones are tree lilies. Um, I bought these, I can't remember where I bought them now. They're really quite a nice lily, they get very tall. They can get up to um, five foot tall, probably if you grow them in the ground, but I tend to grow them in pots, mainly because, like with the dahlias, I'm not entirely sure that they would survive in the ground, in our soil, over winter, because it gets quite damp and sort of boggy, and I'd rather not risk it. Um, it's pretty simple to pot them up. I'm using a fairly large terracotta pot. Um, it's perhaps not as deep as you should go for lilies, but I find these ones, because they're lower and sort of wider at the top, they um, they, uh, they do quite well. And obviously with the lilies getting quite tall, these don't fall over so much, so that's a good thing as well. So. To plant them, pretty simple. Bit of crock, well, broken pot or something. A couple of bits of that. Some people put grit or stones in the bottom. Uh, I generally don't because I find it's fine. And that's it. And this soil here is a mix of our own compost, shop bought compost, and some of this and this I must admit is a bit of an experiment this is if you see that a combination a mixture of leaf mold so we've got a few trees around here and I collect the leaves up every now and then put them in bags and leave it to rot down and sawdust well not so much sawdust but wood shavings if that makes any sense um, I play about in my workshop sometimes and I make things out of wood and as a result of that, I end up with quite a bit of sort of wood shavings and stuff. And I've discovered that if you let it rot down, you can actually use it um, in your compost. You have to be careful, mainly because it, uh, if as it's rotting down, it robs nitrogen from the soil, or it robs nitrogen. So you can't just put it straight on your garden. You do need to leave it to rot down first. But it works kind of the same way as leaf mould. So, yeah. So I'm going to put some of that in the pot as well. The lilies do kind of like it a little acidic. And that's that. So that's the basic soil mix. And then we get our bulbs. And we plunk them in. Obviously, roots at the bottom. Pointy bit at the top. Um, you can pack them in quite tight. Yeah, you can see this one's got a, a growing tip coming. So obviously that bit up, that bit down. You space them about in your pot. You can see some of them are a little smaller than others. But I started, I think it was with three, three largish bulbs, kind of that size. And now I've got smaller ones as well where they've all split. So. I'm just going to pop these in a pot like that and also these little bits as well which probably won't do much but hopefully they'll start to get a little bit bigger I mean even that little one it's probably not worth planting it but I tend to put them in anyway because you never know the tree lilies I bought from a, a garden website you know like the, the sort of sites like Mr Fothergills or Thompson and Morgan those sorts of places the other, other lilies that I'm going to plant up are all ones again that we've rescued. You know, the sort of stuff that you find in a supermarket in a bag at the end of the summer. And that's it. Uh, the rule generally with lily bulbs is, is about three times the depth or the height of the bulb. So that's roughly about right. That's quite fine. And then what I'm going to do is just cover them over with this. Leave them in the greenhouse for a bit. 
Um, it's still a bit cold here. So once I see signs of life from them, I'll start popping them out. There we go. Put a label in because I'm trying to keep the tree lilies separate from the other lilies we grow. And plus, I'm quite forgetful, and I forget what I've put in pots. So that's that one done. In next pot, you can see that I've got quite a few bulbs. Just pop that one over there for now. And you can see this one here, it's starting to split. So I've actually got two coming from that one and then I've got all these smaller ones again starting to grow and these have all been stored over winter um, basically in the pots kind of like I did with the dahlias in the other video and I leave them over winter in the soil that they were in the previous year then I get them all out have a look at them give them a good clean make sure nothing's rotten and what have you and then pop them back up and that's kind of the process basically with them the thing to remember with lilies is as well is that they're like dailies they like a lot of food so the more feed you can give them the better really and what i'll do with these is once we can see the growing tips coming out with the soil i will start feeding them probably once a week and then when they flower maybe up to twice a week with a, a general feed or a seaweed feed and if I ever get around to making the uh, clump free feed then that as well see, kind of pointless really to pot it but it is technically another lily plant although it will be many many years before that gets to that I think I've got one in a lot of pots on as well. This little chap here, this one, as you can see. I don't think it's an Asiatic lily or a tree lily. I think this is probably one of our arum lilies that a little bit has got broken off and came up in the garden. So I thought, well, we'll pot it on, see what happens. A bit of patience and we'll end up with another plant from that. And again, I'll just pop these gnarly bits in so they are starting to grow even that one it might flower but I doubt it but even if I leave them in here and give them good feed so the bulbs can plump up a bit and that will be fine plus they do have quite nice foliage as well if you like leafy things I'll just chuck these little bits in as well again it's probably not worth putting them up but I suppose the, the phrase there would be waste not want not. I forgot to put some of that in, so I'll just sprinkle some of that over the top a little bit. Cover them over, leave them in here. It's the same as the other ones really. The lilies do do well in pots, but you can grow them in the ground as well. I would advise if you're putting them in the ground to dig in some compost or manure into the ground the organic matter because they do want to feed label so don't forget that's that one done as well now we come to these ones These are all the, the sort of rescue jobbies, if you like. So the ones that you find, you know, in your, your supermarkets, end of the season, where they're charging you sort of 50p for a pack of a, maybe three bulbs. And that's kind of what you get. These ones did flower last year. And there's quite a lot for one pot. 
but as you can see they are small bulbs so I will just plonk them all in this one pot some of them have started to grow already probably should have done this a couple of weeks ago you get little clumps like that where they've separated and started to grow I'll chuck them in and all There we go. In these tiny, tiny little bits. Now all go in the pots. Again, same for the tree lilies. A couple of bits of crock. Put some compost in the pot. remember this this time rather than chucking it over the top of them and these are a mixture of oriental lilies and asiatics but they grow pretty much the same way as the tree lilies they're just not as big and the tree lilies we have are white these are all these are mixed colors there's oranges and there's yellows and some reds as well I said they're pretty problem free apart from lily beetles if you get lily beetles in your garden you'll know them because they're like a small beetle and they're bright red um, you can't really miss them you'll know it and if you've grown lilies or anything like vaguely lily like like a snakehead fritillary for example because they like those as well at least they do in our garden yeah, they'll go for those. They don't damage the flowers so much, but what they do do is destroy the foliage because they eat it and it makes the plant look a little unsightly. See that bulb? It's dried out a bit, but uh, yeah, it's not too bad. Some of them might not have fared too well over the winter. I'll just plonk them all in a pot and let them come up obviously once these start to get a little bigger I'll start splitting the bulbs putting them in different pots separating them out a bit we do have other types of lily in the garden as well but they're not these we've got some hemerocallis day lilies as well they're in the ground now That'll probably be a few years before they flower. We bought those from one of our local museums, which has a, a pretty good garden, and they sometimes sell the plants from that. So should really put a label in that one, otherwise I will forget what they are. Let's just get one out of our little label store. Put a label on it so you don't forget. Done. Now, now before I go, I'll show you this little chap. I don't know if you can see that quite that well that little grub there just there is a vine weevil grub we get quite a lot of vine weevils in the garden um, they eat quite a lot of stuff we grow grapes we've got quite a large grape plant the thing with vine weevils is is they will get into the roots of the plant over winter especially if they're in pots and eat all the roots which will kill the plant which I found out the other day uh, we've got a big hydrangea that was in a pot. It was a Mother's Day present from my wife, from the kids. And as I got it out, half of the roots stayed in the pot. And when I looked at the bottom of it, it was full of these little buggers. So obviously what I've done is I've gone through and cleaned all the roots up. So when you check your bulbs, anything that's likely to have roots, it's a good idea to make sure you haven't got any of these in it as well, because they will just munch away through the winter. And that is about that really. That's the lilies done. 
Um, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video.